Hello, artistic friends and visitors. Welcome to Monet Cafe. Today I'm going to use a limited palette. I got back in my studio today after the craziness of Christmas and everything that goes on during the holidays and getting ready for a new year. So I was cleaning up my studio um, from some previous paintings I did and I just didn't feel like putting my pastels away. So I grabbed a little tray of a limited palette. I'm not even sure what I had used these pastels for and I thought, you know what, what a great idea for a lesson to just work with what you have as long as you have the right values. So let's get started and we're going to have some fun here. I thought I'd show you a product I don't even think I've shown in my videos before. This is a way you can make your own pastel surfaces with Art Spectrum Color Fix Primer. I literally had an old board I had done this to. Sorry for being out of focus here. But uh, it creates a grit and a roughness. And this was a board I was experimenting. What am I not experimenting? That I had bought from um, Home Depot and got my husband to cut them up so that I could have paintings on a board. Now this is the little palette of pastels that I used. And I wasn't even sure what painting I had done that I used these pastels for, but I noticed they had a nice harmony and I had a good assortment of dark, medium, and light values. So I thought this will be a neat way to just show how color is not necessarily king, but value is if you've got the right values. So now here's this board I'm working on again. The photo I'm using is a photo I took in my own backyard uh, where we had a home we were temporarily living in. It happens to be where my studio still is right now and uh, my home studio and uh, I want you to take note of the board and the texture. I literally just put that Art Spectrum um, primer on this board years ago. I, I have so many little pieces of extra supplies and things all over the place and while I was doing some tidying up I found this old board and I was like oh my gosh I forgot I even had this but um, it's applied I applied it really loosely and quickly you even see the lines in it still and I'm not gonna get a lot of layering with this which is actually sometimes kind of neat it forces you to be a little bit more careful um, and have what I like to call efficiency of stroke um, you're really paying attention to getting your marks and your strokes correct so notice how good this is just a little new pastel I'm using here and uh, notice how just using the side of it um, works quite well for laying in those grasses and uh, even that tree in the background I happen to think it I had almost looked like a building <laughs> when I first made the marks I almost changed it to a building but I thought no I'll keep it a tree but see how great that was just for getting in your general uh, value and a, an initial sketch with that new pastel. Now I'm going to start working on some of the darks in this and um, I'm switching a lot from my right to my left hand because my tripod was kind of sticking out um, where my foot was and sometimes working right-handed was more convenient and um, I apologize if my hand gets in the way of the painting a little bit. I usually set it up. I'm primarily left-handed um, we actually had a neat survey in our Monet Cafe art group on Facebook uh, asking uh, what everybody was, right-handed, left-handed, and you know there were a few people who were both like me, but I find that a lot of left-handed people are a little bit more ambidextrous because we, we live in a right-handed world. We're kind of forced to do a lot of things right-handed, but it does come in handy, <laughs> in handy with painting. Uh, I actually recommend you trying painting with your non-dominant hand. It really, it, you might surprise yourself. It forces you to be loose, of course, um, but sometimes you paint uh, differently and uh, um, maybe a little bit more unique. So it's kind of fun. So anyway, I'm just getting in my values here. Again, I'm having to be careful about not getting um, too much down too quickly because I don't have the layering potential that I would with like maybe uh, UART paper or some of the other surfaces because this is a homemade surface. But I, I actually kind of like that texture, but I wanted to reduce it a little bit. Um, so in a minute, I use a piece of pipe foam insulation and, um, and kind of scrub that front uh, grasses in. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and speed this up just a little. This has been real time so far. And um, just uh, pay attention to the fact that I'm, I'm really using a limited palette and eventually I do add in, I didn't have many of those golden colors, so I do add some of those later, but uh, enjoy this. I might pop back in in just a minute.
At this point I could tell I was losing a little bit of tooth um, for pastel application at the front foreground there. Um, so in just a second you'll see how I use a, a technique I learned from Karen Margolis um, where you use a fixative. I never use fixative at the end of the painting, but you can use it as your tool to apply it uh, where you want to like darken the foreground or get a little bit more tooth. The fixative has a little bit of grit to it, so you can't see where I'm spraying it here, but I'm actually just spraying a little bit on the foreground and it darkens it up a little, which is actually good in the foreground. Uh, values are darker. And then I'm able to get a little bit more of uh, the pastel layering down with that really pretty blue. I almost wish I just left that blue there. But uh, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe if you haven't already. This was a fun painting and I encourage you just to have fun sometimes. Don't get so serious. Use some supplies that are, you know, just kind of laying around and grab some pastels and have a good old time. Happy New Year, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today.